Okay, welcome back. So this is the third video of the series. In this one, we're going to talk about how we're going to um, use the information of which note is the lowest sounding note of the chord in order to, in order to determine the position of the chord. Okay. So uh, next, we need to determine which position the original chord was presented in. Uh, there are three different possible positions. Each chord's position is determined solely by which member of the chord. For example, root, third, or fifth is the lowest sounding note, also known as the bass. Again, I will interchangeably use either the lowest sounding note or the bass. That only means whatever is in the bottom most position. Okay? So uh, remember that in music notation, we arrange pitch from bottom to the top um, in notation. Uh, so anything that's below a note, okay, that means it's sounding uh, lower, okay, so in this case, the D is the lowest sounding note, okay. Anyway, so uh, this is the same triad from the example um, in the uh, last video or uh, above in the worksheet, and we arranged them into um, the root position, so G, B, and D, and we figured out the G is the root, B is the third, and D is the fifth. Um, when we get back to the original triad, okay, so original position with the D in the bottom, D4, okay, we can uh, narrow still look at the same names, uh, right, for the D. The D is the fifth of this chord, the G is the root, and the B is the third. These names come from the root position. Remember, once we put into root position, we now know that the G is the root. Any other form, uh, any, any other position for this chord, no matter where the G is, either up here or down here, or even an octave lower, it will always be the root. Okay, same thing for all the other ones. That's why here, even though the D is uh, below the G, in this formation of the chord, this is still the fifth, okay? Because we determined that the D is the fifth of this chord, this triad, right? Okay, so we can see that the fifth is the lowest sounding note. With this information, then we can name the position of this form of the triad, right? Recall that there are three different possible positions um, I mentioned above, and each chord's position is determined solely by which member of the chord, i.e. the root third or fifth, is the lowest sounding note. It's also known as the bass. On the last page of this PDF, Okay. Um, there's a chart. If the lowest sounding note is the root, then the position's name is root position. Okay, so that's um, just from from what we've talked about before in root position. However, if the lowest sounding note is the third of the chord, then we call it first inversion. If the lowest sounding note is the fifth of the chord, then we call it second inversion. Okay, uh, you can see an example here. Okay, I have an A minor triad, so, uh, A C E. Uh, in this position, this is a root position because the A is the root and indeed is the lowest sounding note. Here is another position of the same notes, A, C, and E. However, the C is the lowest sounding note. Okay, And from root position, we know that C is the third. So here, this is the third of the chord. It's in the lowest uh, position. So this is in first inversion. When we, uh, we can invert it again into a different position. Now this lowest sounding note is the fifth. Okay. Um, and you can see that if the lowest sounding note is the fifth, we can call it the second inversion. They're named this way because we can invert a given triad twice by using a different member of the triad as the lowest sounding note. So when the root is in the base, it is called root position. When we can invert it once with the third in the base, we call it first inversion. We can invert it again with the fifth in the base, we now call it the second inversion, okay? Um, by the way, it doesn't matter uh, even if this uh, this note is an octave lower or, or, or what have you, it doesn't matter what the distance is between the lowest sounding note and, and the other notes. As long as the lowest sounding note is the third here, for example, it will always be the first inversion, okay? So we're always just looking at what is the lowest sounding note. For example, for uh, an orchestra, right? So if an orchestra plays a chord, the lowest sounding note, let's say we have a tuba that's playing the C, um, the resulting chord will always be a first inversion in this case, okay? For these exercises, what I want you to do um, is to, uh, these are the same chords from exercises four and five above, okay? For each of these triads, tell me the, uh, the member of the triad that is the lowest sounding note, first of all, so you put that in here. And then secondly, tell me which position the chord is in. So either root position, first inversion, second inversion. And you can use this chart above to determine that. Um, first, this is, I gave you an example. So um, the in this chord, the B is the fifth of the chord. Um, and it's in the bass. Okay, so it's the lowest sounding note. Okay, this is the fifth. 
Because of that, okay, if the fifth is the lowest sounding note of the chord, this is in second inversion. So that's why I wrote second inversion, okay? So you're gonna continue uh, doing the same thing with all of these. Make sure you check the answers that I posted as well because um, then you will know whether you're on the right track, okay? Um, yep, good luck with this. And also reference uh, the previous two videos, the uh, handout that's posted on Blackboard, um, and also the textbook.